Hello, I'm Christian, and welcome to this video review of the recently released firmware update of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, otherwise known as It's About Freaking Time, Blackmagic! In this video, I will cover the patiently awaited in-camera format, compare the different codecs, and do some focusing tests with a couple of Olympus Micro Four Thirds lenses that I own. Let's start off by downloading and installing the latest software. If you already know how to do it or just don't want to listen to this part, go ahead and click on the annotation to skip ahead. First thing you want to do is head on over to Blackmagic Design's website, hit the support link on the top menu, or scroll down and click the new camera update graphic. They will take you to the same page. Scroll down to the latest download section and click on the link that applies to your current operating system. I will be choosing the Windows version. A pop-up will appear asking you to register. You can skip that portion and head straight to the download only link at the bottom. Your download should start. If it doesn't, follow the on-screen instruction. While that downloads, go ahead and delete the current version of the Blackmagic camera utility. You won't be allowed to install the latest version of the software with an older version currently on your system. Once that finishes uninstalling and your download completes, you will need to restart your computer. To install the new software, head on over to where your system downloads files to. Look for the Blackmagic camera utility with the latest firmware number, unpack it, and run the Blackmagic camera utility install. Run through the licensing agreement and install the program. Once the program finishes installing, you will be asked to restart your computer. Once you restart your computer, find the new software in your applications folder and run it. Plug in your pocket camera with the provided USB cable and turn it on. Once it turns on, your computer will prompt you with a message asking if you would like to update the camera. Go ahead and click update now. Your camera will shut off and the software will run through the install process. Once it is complete, your camera should restart. Congratulations, you now have in-camera formatting of your SD card. To format your card, hit the menu button on the back of the camera. You will be greeted with a new menu. Select the format card option and you will be given two options, HSF Plus and XFAT. HSF Plus is Mac only compatible. XFAT is both Mac and PC compatible. Select your desired format, hit the OK button. You will be asked if you want to continue, select yes, format my card. Hit the OK button one more time and you're off. The camera will now format your SD card. Amazing, you just formatted an SD card on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. In the new menu, you will see options for metadata. Metadata states the obvious. This is where you input your project metadata. Settings, adjust various camera settings, format card allows you to format your card in either HSF Plus or XFAT frame guide. I assume this is for turning on and off frame guides on an external monitor if you have one attached. Meters allows you to turn on and off your meters in the video display. And focus peaking allows you to turn on and off focus peaking in the video display. When I first got the pocket camera, using the focus button on the back was utterly pointless. The camera would rarely find the correct focus and it was insanely slow. I mean slower than trying to connect to the interwebs on a dial-up connection. And just like dial-up, you didn't always get the results you wanted. All subsequent shots were taken with an Olympus Micro Four Thirds 17mm at 1080p f1.8 ISO 800-270 degree shutter angle and with a white balance of 5000 Kelvin in a low light situation with the subject about 1.5 feet away from the lens. Ready? Here we go. I'll start off with ProRes 422HQ. Hit the focus button and bang, correct focus. Moving on to ProRes 422. Hit the focus button one more time and bang, correct focus once again. Now ProRes LT. Hit the focus button. Wow, correct focus. And last flavor of ProRes, ProRes Proxy. I'll hit the focus button one more time and it manages to pull focus correctly one more time. And last but not least, let's try out the compressed raw 10-bit RGB. Hit the focus button and spot on again. So that was pretty amazing in my opinion. All the codecs had similar focus speed, so I decided to compare the different clips together to see if there are any notable difference in the focus speed. Also, I would be able to compare the noise each codec generated and just the overall quality of each clip. I adjusted each clip to one frame before I pushed the focus button. It's pretty quick, so get ready. And wow, not as fast as a mirrorless camera body, but still pretty quick. Raw focusing in the quickest with a time of 1.13 seconds 
while the others didn't grow far behind with each ProRes flavor focusing in at about the same time. Pause the video now to compare the quality of the clips after being compressed by YouTube's famously awesome compression algorithms. Which do you think looks the best? Leave your opinion in the comment section below. I thought I might have a fluke on my hand so I decided to do more tests with how the camera focused in on the subject at different distances and with a different lens. The next few clips will all be in ProRes 422. First off, I have the 17mm f1.8 with the subject about 3 feet from the lens. Next up is a 17mm with the subject about 5.5 feet away from the lens. Here I have the 45mm f1.8 with the subject at about 5.5 feet from the lens. Now the subject at about 3 feet from the lens. Finally, the 45mm at its minimum focusing distance of 9.5 inches. A massive improvement to a great little camera. In-camera formatting, improved lens support for Micro Four Thirds lenses, at least on the Olympus lenses I use. The menu could use a bit of help. I don't really care for the option for metadata setting in the initial menu. It was easily accessible from the main menu screen by hitting the OK button and I don't really think that anybody uses that option on the pocket camera. It was nice to have focus peaking and meters on off icons but I did notice when switching the camera from ProRes to RAW and changing out the lenses, those features would reset to the off position. A future firmware release from Blackmagic to address that little issue would be a welcome one. The frame guide settings should be a sub option in the display portion of the settings menu, depending if you have the HDMI overlays on on or off. In my opinion, there should only be two options in the initial menu. Those should be settings and format card. But we must remember, these menus are designed for the pocket camera's big brother, which are the cinema cameras with their touch displays, which makes navigating the menu a breeze. So there you have it folks, my opinion on the improvements Blackmagic has made on the pocket camera. Using the camera with the new firmware is just an overall better experience in my opinion. If you have any thoughts or opinions on what features you'd like to see upgraded with a future firmware release, I'd like to know. Leave a message in the comment section below. Go ahead and click that thumbs up button if you like the video. Thanks for watching and as always, fade to black.